Hi everyone. Uh, today we are going to continue our series on systems of equations with today being all about the row reducing and augmented matrix. So here's our example of an augmented matrix right here. So we've got three, three rows and then four columns. Now this is taken from a system of equations where there's an x, y, and z. Now our goal is to row reduce so basically do a bunch of operations on these numbers to get it into one of two forms. The first form, and that is our row reduced form. All right, so the row reduced form has a couple properties. Uh, one of the properties is that starting on the top left corner right there, going down bottom to the basically down the uh, diagonal here should be ones. Okay, so one, you can see it, one, one, one. It is possible that it could be a zero on the last row, but uh, those are special ones, and we'll deal with those later. But for now, what we want a diagonal of ones, and the second property is that every number below the diagonal of ones must be a zero. So you can see that these are zeros here. All right, so that's the row reduced form. And the next form, is row reduced echelon form. Now this one has a couple properties as well. They have to contain all the properties from row reduced form. So notice that they do have their diagonal of ones and every number below the diagonal of ones are zeros. But also all the numbers above the diagonal have to be zeros. Now it has to be everything to the left of this vertical line here. Um, so everything to the left and above the diagonal you can see are zeros. And you got our diagonal of ones and then more zeros. Okay, so that is row reduced echelon form. Now, why do we care about this? Like, why, why do we care? Why is this important? Well, if you were to change this back to your system of equation form, let's go ahead and do that. All right, remember that these are all the coefficients, these numbers here are all the coefficients to our variables. Remember, the first column is x, then you got y, then you got z. So the first line would say 1x plus 0y plus 0z equals 3. Then you got 0x plus 1y plus 0z equals 4. And then finally, 0x, 0y plus 1z equals 1. Well, I'm not sure if you can see it, but if you look more closely, 0y, that goes away. 0z, that's 0. So what do you have left in this first line right here? 1x equals 3. In other words, x equals 3. How about the second line? We got 0x, that's just 0. 0z, that's 0. So what's left? 1y equals 4. In other words, y equals 4. And then finally, 0x, 0y, those both are gone. We're left with 1z equals 1, so z equals 1. And so what this does is it allows us to read off the solutions to our system very easily. So now the trick is, how in the world do we go from here to down there? There are a total of three row operations. And each one of these operations will get us closer to getting this matrix from the very, you know, the, the beginning augmented matrix to the row reduced or the row reduced echelon form matrix. All right, so let's start with the easiest one first. All right, this one is called the swap. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take one row and swap it with another. It's the easiest operation you have. All right, so let's swap the first two. So we would say row one, and we would use these double arrows, and then row two. So what this says is swap row 1 with row 2. So let's see what that would look like. So it'd be, oops, so neg negative 2, 2, 1, and 3. And then row 1 is now row 2. Now notice we didn't do anything to row 3, so we would just leave that alone. And there you go. That is our first operation, swapping two rows. Our second operation 
would be to multiply a row by a non-zero constant. So the second row, uh, row operation is pretty simple. All right, so let's say we took the second row. Let's multiply the second row by negative one half. All right, so that's the way we would write this, and then I would just. All right, let me let me explain this notation. So what this notation right here says is take row two, multiply everything in it by negative one half. The arrow is telling you to basically replace that in back into row two. So let's do that. So what's negative two times negative one half? That's a one. Two times negative one half is a negative one. One times negative one half is a negative one half. And then three times negative one half is negative three halves. Now we didn't do anything to the first and third row, so let me just rewrite those back in. Okay, and there you go. So the red, uh, nothing changed, and then in the second row we multiplied by negative one half. All right, so let's go on to the third row operation. Okay, this row operation is by far the most difficult row operation. And it says replace a row with the sum of that row and a constant multiple of another. So let's actually start with an easy example here. All right, what we're going to do is we are going to take row 1 plus row 2. Oops, row 2. So again, notice what it says is replace a row with the sum of that row and a constant multiple of another row. So let's just, am I adding two rows together? Exactly, I am. All right, and then what I'm going to do is replace that, because it's saying replace. Uh, so let's replace that back into row one. So add two row, these the two corresponding uh, columns, basically, together, and then replace that into row one. OK, so what happens when we take three plus negative two? And we get a one. What happens when you add negative two? Here, we can even do this down here. Row one plus row two equals, or goes back into row one. So first one, we had uh, three plus negative two, and you can, that was a one. And then our second one, so that was the negative two plus this two. And that's a zero. Put a zero up here. And then we have the eight and the one. So that's going to be eight, because that's in row one, plus one. That's a nine. And then nine and three. So we got nine plus three. And that's going to get us 12. And we're going to put that back into row one. And that's it. That Well, that's the simplified version of this row operation. Um, now, I didn't do anything to these two rows, so I would just put them back in unchanged. Okay, so let's move on to the more complicated version of this operation. Okay, before we begin, this is the same augmented matrix, but notice that I swapped row 1 with row 3, so you can just pause, uh, go back about 10 seconds, and you can see that all I did was swap the, fir uh, the first and third row, which I'm allowed to do because that was row, uh, the first row operation I'm allowed to do. Okay, so your goal, remember, because what's the point? Our goal is to change this into a diagonal of ones. Okay, so I want those to be ones. But I need these three here. They need to be zero. All right, so how am I going to accomplish that? Well, it's using this operation. So how can I change this into a zero? So let me write this down. We have row three, so take a, it's the sum of a row, okay, that row, so it's row three, plus, okay, so I'm going to add this to row one. And I'm going to store this back into row 3. But let's see what happens if I just do it 
like that. Okay, well, what's row three? That's a three. What's in row one? That's a one. What does that give me? A four. No, I need a zero. Okay, so how would that become a zero? Well, this is going to have to stay three, but what happens if there was a negative three in front of here? Then it would be three plus negative three. Well, you know what that is? That's zero. Okay, so what if I were to multiply row 1 by negative 3 first? Okay, so let's try that. Okay, so here's our corresponding row 3 element. That's that 3 right there. And then it's going to be minus 3 times, well, what was in row 1? That was that 1 right there. And that's going to give me 0. Okay, well, let's, let's go over here and start the matrix. All right, so again, I'm storing this in the row 3. And so this becomes now a 0. All right, so let's do the next two. Well, we have negative 2, is that right there, minus 3 times, well, what's coming from row 1? It's that 2. So let me just put a 2. And so this is negative 2 minus 6. So that gives me negative 8. So I'll put negative 8. And then we have the 8 minus 3 times, and what's coming from row 1 is a negative 3. So this is 8 plus 9, okay, so that's 17. And our last one, which would be the 9 and the 8, so that's going to be 9 minus 3 times 8, so that's 9 minus 24, so give me negative 15. Let's go Let's go over here. That's our negative 15. Let's draw that line. All right, now since I didn't change anything to row 1 and row 2, I'll just replace those with the original. Okay. So do you see what happened? When we do this operation right here, this turned into a 0. Great, because I need it to be a 0. Now this also needs to be a 0, so I'd have to do the same um, operation but on row 2. So if you you can pause it and give it a shot but what you're doing is you're going to take row 2, always start with the row that you're going to change then you're going to write in what you have to multiply row 1 by. So if this is a negative 2 what would this have to be? This would have to be a positive 2. Well it's not a positive 2, it's a positive 1. So let's multiply that row by a positive 2 and then let's put that back into row 2. And if you do that, okay, let's actually do that right now. We got row 2 plus 2 times row 1 back into row 2. All right, so that's a negative 2 plus 2 times the 1. And so that's 0. So now this is going to become a 0. So let me write that down here. We're not changing anything to row 1. Now that's going to be a 0. Oh, I ran out of room. Okay, so then you get uh, 2 plus 2 times 2. So that's going to be 2 plus 4. That's going to be 6. And I did run out of space, but uh, give it a shot and you should get negative 5. And then here you would get 19. And then we left row 3 alone. Or we've already dealt with row 3. So, using our first set of operations, we did a row swap. And then we did this fancy row operation here. And look, we have a 1 here, which we're supposed to have. And then we have zeros below the diagonal. So, so far, so good. And uh, we'll actually start the first or the next video by completing, or we'll actually just do the whole thing over again, um, starting from the very beginning augmented matrix and then go all the way to the end. Okay, so thanks for watching.